Welcome to the haunted graveyard. Uh, he's gone. Uh, it's just me. That was the horror host. He uh, tries to uh, kind of take control once in a while. Uh, anyway, I'm back. So uh, in this video, we're going to look at DC's The Sinister House of Secret Love. And the title of this video is actually just uh, the DC Sinister House because uh, this there was a title change with this, with issue number five, and we will get to that in a moment. But first, let me introduce the lovely Lilith, the Vampire Bride. She's going to be hanging out with us for this one and helping me show you these great covers, and tell you a bit about uh, these comic books. She's always welcome. She first showed up in uh, my uh, video about uh, Marvel's Vampire Tales. So, if you want to see more of Lilith, just check out uh, the video about Vampire Tales that I did. So, uh, this uh, no doubt uh, came about because of the popularity of the daytime drama Dark Shadows that ran from uh, 1966 to 1971 and it was very popular around about the time uh, this title started in 1971 and no doubt the folks at DC were going for a gothic horror look here. They even got some people to do some of these covers that were famous for doing the paperback covers you know of gothic horror. And, uh, you know, the gothic horror is uh, mostly, you know, a really dark uh, setting, uh, you know, and this is mostly the gothic romance, actually, which has a lot of horror elements, but uh, it's, it's very dark. It's set in old dilapidated mansions that are usually haunted, and it's just a dark, horror-tinged outlook on things, that, that sort of ambiance that we're looking at here. So anyway, uh, this first issue here, this cover is by a guy named Victor Kalin. Interior art, Don Heck, John Kalman, inked by Vince Coletta. And there's number two. This cover is by Jerome Podwill, and uh, the border art is by, by Tony DeZuniga, interior art Tony DeZuniga. The covers on these things are really great, very evocative of the subject matter, the gothic romance. And this is number three. This cover is by George Zeal. And interior art by Alex Toth, Frank Giacoya, Doug Wildey, and Jack Sparling. And as you can see, even the oval there, that is like a common trope with the Gothic romance novels in paperback form that were popular back in the round about that time and into the 60s. Before that, uh, they used uh, this, this oval uh, framing device for the cover. Speaking of framing, my other framing piece is a swell Halloween blow mold of a haunted house. And we go to number four. This cover is by Tony DeZuniga. And the interior art is by Tony DeZuniga. All right, here is number five. Here's the title change. They went from the sinister house of secret love to Secrets of Sinister House. Now, maybe they were banking on getting a lot of female readers, you know, the, the girl audience to pick these books up when they went with uh, the gothic romance and the love in the title and all that. I don't know. Maybe that didn't work out for them, and when they got some of the numbers back for sales, they didn't like it, so they just switched it to straight gothic horror, pretty much, just like 
you know, the, the rest of the mystery line, House of Mystery, House of Secrets, Witching Hour, etc. So anyway, this number five here, uh, this is, uh, came out in 72, and this cover is by Nick Cardi, and Cardi did some great covers back in the day, especially for DC and especially for uh, the mystery slash horror issues. And here's number six. Okay, this number six, this cover is by Mike Kaluta, and it's thought that Bernie Wrightson might have pitched in and helped him out with the deadline and done like the bottom third of the cover. You know, there's some doubt about that, but uh, that's that's a possibility. I mean, I recognize... You know, the, those guys worked together a lot, and they covered each other's backs, and those deadlines were a pain sometimes, so they helped each other. It could very well be the case. Interior art, Mike Kaluta, Alfredo Alcala, Ed Ramos, Mar Amongo, Bill Drought, Frank Giacoya. Now, I believe this issue also introduces a horror host named Eve. Eve is an ancient witch and she's related to Cain and Abel, and I think that maybe she's identified as their mother in some cases. I don't know if that's them just trying to get on her nerves, but I think later it was decided that she's probably one of their cousins. So, you know, those guys, they, they live for hundreds of years, so. Age jokes for an old crone like that. <laughs> Probably wasn't very effective anyway. All right, uh, this is number seven. This uh, cover is by Mike Kaluta. Interior art by, by Nestor Redondo and, and Sergio Aragonis, June Lafamia, Sam Glansman, Laura Schoberg. And even if you don't care about, you know, the details of who did the what or whatever, I mean, just look at the covers. I mean, they're just great stuff from from a great time in comic book history. I mean, it's hard to beat a DC 20 center, especially when it's, you know, when it's horror. They called it mystery. They called these the mystery line, but it was horror. They just had to kind of soften it. When Joe Orlando got there in 68 and started that line with really House of Mystery 174, you know, they spun this, called it the mystery line, and I had all these different titles, you know, included in that. And it ran a long time. I mean, it was hot up through the mid-70s, and it went even past that a little bit. But uh, they called it the mystery line because when this first started, the comics code was still in full effect. And they didn't want to take a chance on... You know, they didn't want to ruffle any parents' feathers or get any groups up against them or anything, so they just called it mystery, but hey, it was horror. Later on in 71, when the comics code loosened their grip on some of that stuff, you know, they, uh, it, it wasn't that big a deal after that, and they got to use some, some of the classic monsters like vampires and werewolves and such, but uh, anyway, this number eight, uh, this cover is by Nick Cardi. Art by Bernard Bailey, Bill Drought, Ruben Yandok, and Alex Nino. Here's a gray tone cover. This is number nine. This cover is by Jack Sparling. Art by Abe Ocampo and Rico Rival. Number ten. Cover by Jack Sparling. Art by Alfredo Alcala. Jerry Talayoc. Larry Hama. Neil Adams. Rich Buckler on the inside. Number 11. Cover by Jack Sparling. Interior art. Michael Luda. Ruben Yandok as Rubeny. He often signed 
as Reuben Y, which most people think is Reubeny, but that's like the short form of his name. His name's Reuben Yambach. Sergio Aragonis, Alex Nino. Number 12, covered by Luis Dominguez. Interiors, Mike Sikowski, Wayne Howard, Alex Nino, Sergio Aragonis, Alfredo Alcala. Number 13, cover Nick Cardi, Interiors, Alfredo Alcala, Alex Nino, Jess Jod Loman. What a rat. Okay, there's number 14, covered by Luis Dominguez, art by Alfredo Alcala, Mike Sikowski, Bill Drought. Number 15, cover Jack Sparling, interiors, Jack Sparling, Romy Gamboa, Jess John Lohman, And number 16, cover Nick Cardi, art by Don Perlin, Vicente Alcazar, Ernie Chan as Ernie Chua. Yeah, first they didn't have his name right. They called him Chua. I think the paperwork was messed up when he became a, you know, a citizen, and uh, they got it corrected later, though. Here's number 17. This uh, cover is also by Nick Cardi. Art by Ramona Fredon, Howard Chaikin, Wynn Mortimer, Frank Giacoya, Cy Barry. And we have the last issue, number 18, which came out in 1974. That's pretty nice. Cover by Nick Cardi. Art by John Calman, Murphy Anderson, Angel B. Luna, Jerry Grandinetti, Gil Kane, Bernard Sachs. So there you have it. That's the whole run. You know, it, it was uh, Sinister House of Secret Love, one through four, and then it changed to Secrets of Sinister House. And I will be covering the... The sister title to this, which is called uh, Dark Mansion of Forbidden Love, in the next video. So stay tuned. And Lilith says she's going to hang around and help me with that one, too. See you guys.